Okay, so I got a good one for you, bro. This is the secret that Andrew Huberman taught me to get rid of fear and become more successful. But it actually, it goes way back to Jesus 2,000 years ago in the Bible. This is super cool. So, you know Sigmund Freud, the uh, Austrian, you were just telling me, I was trying to remember where he's from, the Austrian psychologist pioneered uh, psychoanalysis and, and all that good stuff. Sigmund Freud was one of the first people to sort of topographically break down the brain. So he broke down our our brain into different sort of functions and different functioning parts. And so what he discovered is kind of these three main functions or areas. We have our ego, we have our super ego, and then we have our unconscious. These are the three main parts. And he wrote an entire book on this. But basically, these three different parts function in a really, really interesting way, right? So you have your ego. That's the part of your mind that actually keeps you functioning in society. It is responsible for you making decisions that won't get you ostracized from people. It's the part of your brain that basically allows you to fit in and make sure you don't do anything crazy. Then you have your unconscious. And that's like the monkey brain. That's the part of your brain that it sees an attractive woman and just like wants to go have sex with her, right? Or you see something on your Instagram and next thing you know, you're like watching porn. That's because of the monkey brain. The monkey brain is the part that just wants to please the flesh. It doesn't think about what everybody else is going to think. It doesn't think about what's the right thing to do. It just goes. And then your super ego is the part that discerns which part of the brain to listen to. So, you know the, the proverbial angel and devil on your shoulder, right? You have an angel talking to you on one side. You have a devil talking to you on the other side. That's actually true. So that's actually a real thing that Sigmund Freud discovered, essentially. But the superego is your own voice choosing which one to listen to. And so to take that into like a, a modern framework and what I've found in my life and so many other people's lives, there are so many people who want to be successful. They want to live these great lives. And they know, they know there's a certain way of thinking that will help them live a better life. They know there's... There's a thought pattern, there's a mindset that is conducive to them building the life and becoming the person they want to become, right? They, they have this belief and, they, and they, they've experienced it before. They've had these thoughts that were really valuable and they've, they've told themselves something and then because of the thoughts, they went and did something and they saw it work. Like they experienced this magic almost. Yo, we're filming, bro. Okay, so, so they've experienced this sort of magic, right? Where they experience the power of positive thinking. The problem is the devil on the shoulder. And there's this other voice that tells people you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not qualified enough. Remember who you used to be. Remember what you used to do. Remember this, this, and this. You're, you're not able to do these things you're dreaming of. And so there's this, there's this liar on the shoulder that just condemns and lies and blames and criticizes. And the problem is... Not that we can't have these positive thoughts, but that these thoughts, the devil on the shoulder, so often feel so much louder. And we can't figure out how to quiet this voice. And so it's actually this thing, like if you ever see somebody who's trying to grow in life, they really want to, they really want to build a better life, they're trying, they're watching all the videos, they're reading all the books, they're making all the progress, or at least they're trying to, but they're actually not making any progress, but they, they seem like they're, they should be. It's because usually this voice is still blocking them in some way. This voice is still paralyzing them by fear. It's actually a voice of fear. It's a, it's a lying voice of anxiety. And so here's the solution. Here's, here's what Dr. Andrew Huberman taught me. And here's how it goes back to the Bible. I watched this video from Andrew Huberman like six years ago. When I was 17, I was building my first business. And I was having a cold call every day. I was, you know, I still had acne on my face, bro, but I'm cold calling doctors every day. And so every day I'm just anxious, right? Like I got to call these guys and they hang up on me and they cuss me out and it sucks. And so I just, uh, I have all this fear and I'm watching, you know, the YouTube algorithms to see like, how can I, how can I improve? And I, I discover Andrew Huberman and I watched this video where he says the most successful people I've studied, whether they're Navy SEALs athletes, doctors, CEOs, it doesn't matter, professional athletes, 
they all have this one thing in common. They all make a consistent practice of gratitude. They all consistently practice being grateful. He said the secret to high performance in any field was actually the foundation of gratitude. And so I tried it. I started, instead of viewing all the negative things that would happen for me cold calling, I just switched my mind and I was like, all right, what if I'm grateful for this? What, what can I find here to be grateful for? I'm grateful that I get to try this skill. I'm grateful that I have a phone that can reach somebody all across the country. I'm grateful that I have the skills to actually believe that I can even cold call these people in the first place, that I have something to offer them. And I just went gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Next thing you know, I started to get excited to do this thing that I was just scared to do. And so here's, here's a crazy story for you. This happened a few months ago. I'm going to this event in Scottsdale, Arizona to speak. Um, there's only, I'm the only other speaker at this event that this guy's hosting. And I start to feel this kind of battle in my mind, right? Because I'm an introverted guy. I don't like going and like being around a ton of people for too long. You already know that about me from New York. Like, I just want to work and I don't love sharing. Like I just, I'm not, it's outside my comfort zone. So I start to feel this battle in my mind on one end. I'm really excited to go talk to these guys and help them. On the other end, I have that lying voice. Oh, you can't do this, bro. Oh, you got lucky. Oh, you don't actually have anything of value to share. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You're not qualified. You didn't even, you didn't even make it past ninth grade. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I feel this battle going on. And I'm praying to God hour before I'm supposed to go speak. I'm like praying to God. I'm like, okay, what, what are you trying to teach me here? What, what, what do you want me to do here? And I, I open my Bible and I'm like, okay, what do you want me to read in this book? And he says, read Philippians. And I'm like, God, I just read Philippians over on the way, on the way over on the plane. I just read the entire book of Philippians. It's only five chapters. Like I just read it. And he's like, read it again. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll read it again. I just read it though. I'm kind of like complaining to God. And I'm reading it, I'm reading it, I'm going. And then I get to Philippians 4. And Philippians 4 is one of the most powerful chapters in the entire Bible. In Philippians 4, St. Paul, he writes, Be anxious in nothing, but in everything through prayer with supplications of thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard and protect your hearts. Be anxious in nothing, but in everything, through prayer with supplications of thanksgiving. The Greek word is, oh, the Greek word is Eucharista, which is the Eucharist in Christianity, which is like the communion, the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the blood of Jesus when he goes to the cross. The Greek word's Eucharista. The Greek word for thanksgiving is Eucharista. So be anxious in nothing but in everything through prayer with supplications of Eucharista, which just translates to gratitude or gratefulness. So Paul is writing, don't be anxious in everything, but instead ask God and then give thanks to him no matter what you're going through. And then after you do that, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard and protect your hearts. So I, I'm, I'm reading this verse and I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the solution. I shouldn't be anxious in anything. I should just make my request known to God and then give him thanks. And so I do that. I sit back, I close the book, and I just sit there and I tell God, Hey man, you already know this, but here's what's going on. <laughs> and here's my request. But thank you. Thank you that you've brought me in this room. Thank you that I have the opportunity to share my story with these entrepreneurs. Thank you that I'm in Scottsdale in the summer and it's beautiful here. Thank you for this amazing Airbnb. They gave me this like super nice master bedroom to stay in. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for playing pickleball this morning. Thank you for everything. I'm just giving him thanks. Next thing you know, I'm not even thinking about the fear. Like the anxiety just washed away. Because I stopped listening to the lie and I started giving thanks. And so gratitude was the mechanism that enabled me to shift my focus to the positive side of my brain, the angel on my shoulder. I accessed it through gratitude. And here's, here's where it gets crazy and God kind of like winks at me in this moment. This was so cool. 
I'm just sitting there meditating on Philippians chapter 4, this exact verse, be anxious in nothing, but in everything through prayer with supplications of thanksgiving. And I'm feeling this peace, I'm feeling this relief, I'm feeling really good. And then I walk inside, and there's another speaker going, the guy who's running the event, he's speaking. And there's probably 30, 35 people in this room. And I sit down while this guy's speaking, I sit down next to this random kid who I had not met yet. And usually when somebody's speaking and you're in a room like that, like you don't talk, you don't have side conversations because it's distracting. But this kid saw me out there reading the Bible. And as I sit down next to him, he said, he leans over and he's like, hey, bro, what are you reading in the Bible? And I'm like, oh, bro, I was, I was just reading Philippians. He's like, no way, bro. I'm reading Philippians right now, too. There's 66 books in the Bible. We're both reading the exact same book. He's like, I'm reading Philippians, too. It's a short book, five little chapters. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, bro. And he's like, yeah, you know Philippians chapter 4? He's saying this. You know Philippians chapter 4? Be anxious in nothing, but in everything through prayer with supplications of thanksgiving. Make your request known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard and protect your hearts. He says, that verse got me through college, bro. And I look at him, and I start laughing. I'm like, no way, bro. I was literally just out there meditating, not reading. I was meditating on that verse for like 15 minutes, just that verse. I don't even think the kid knew I was going up to speak next. I don't think, I don't even think he had any idea who I was. He's, I was just, he's like, that, that verse got me through college. And I'm reading Philippians right now too. And I, I start laughing. And in that moment, I just knew like God's with me and he's trying to make it so clear. And so I just had this gratitude. I had this joy and I went up, I got to share my story and I had so much fun. I felt, I felt so much peace and I don't always, right? But I felt so much peace in that moment because of the gratitude, because of the gratitude. Like in any moment, bro, I was struggling earlier today and then I didn't want to film. I didn't want to film because I was like, man, I'm not, now I'm not in the mood. I have like, I, I view it as a spiritual attack, but like I'm having all these like negative thoughts and all, all these things that are making me not want to produce wanting to keep me stagnant. The second I switched to gratitude, God, thank you for allowing me to go through this. Thank you for allowing me to go through this. Thank you for allowing me to face this challenge. Thank you for enabling me to face this head on because I know it's going to make me stronger. Thank you. The second I did that, bro, was like, let's shoot. Let's film. Let's go. Let's produce. So, bro, that's the secret. Andrew Huberman found this out neurologically. He studied the most successful people in the world. He discovered this. And St. Paul wrote this 2,000 years ago in the Bible in Philippians chapter 4. Were you giving gratitude before calling you out today? 100%. Yeah, before I said, hey, we got to talk about this, I was, I was literally just being grateful. And that's when it hit me. It's, it's a secret, bro, but it's so hard to stay there. But it's a secret. It's, it's, a, it's a power, bro. It's a, it's, a, it's a magic solution to fear and to inaction and to, and to laziness, too. Yeah, so... A hundred percent. A hundred percent.